Hawaii, a series of tropical islands with breathtaking views at every turn, where the spirit of aloha is a lifestyle, and where the culinary scene is a foodie's paradise. Hey Bizabees! In this video, I'm going to share my recommendations for family-friendly spots on the island of Oahu and feature some of my new favorite eats. We'll start in the North Shore and work our way down to the East Side, explore Kaneohe, and finally head back to Waikiki where the magic happens. Aloha! Alright, first stop. Haleiwa in the casual and laid-back North Shore known for its epic waves, Matsumoto shave ice, and on this particular day, super high winds. <laughs> we spent a couple of days on the North Shore and on one of the nicer days, we made a stop at the Sunrise Shack across from Sunset Beach. There's one in the Outrigger in Waikiki, but I thought this would be really fun to kind of explore, visit Halalea, um, yesterday and then just kind of stay up here and have a different Hawaiian experience. The Sunrise Shack started as a coffee shop in a small shack on a plumeria farm in 2016. They offer healthy bites and salads, delicious smoothie bowls, and cold pressed juices to promote healthy and happy living. Right down my alley. I got the tropical smoothie bowl she that's a taste it. of Hawaii with a mango and coconut based smoothie topped with crunchy granolas, super sweet Hawaiian papaya, and a drizzle of dragon fruit honey. It's so refreshing. The sun's like beating down on us right now. So this, like it's not too sweet. It's just refreshing with a little bit of crunch. It's a great snack. It was a refreshing treat that fueled both Erisi and I. Just enough for her to chase around the chickens on the farm and for me to chase after her. You like coconut? Just a bit down the road from the Sunrise Shack is Kahuku Land Farms, a series of tropical fruit stands to get the most exotic fresh fruits on the island. Apple bananas, papayas, coconuts, and even some tropical ones that my mom identified having in Vietnam. And then there's also even a food truck back there for lumpias. As we kept driving, I couldn't help but notice Mike's huli chicken. And of course I knew we had to stop because the last time we were in Hawaii, I could not get enough of it. And of course we ran into the man himself, Mike from Mike's huli chicken on my last Aloha Eats video. But I couldn't do a food tour without stopping by Mike's huli chicken again. And he just told me this is the new location. So Mike, can you tell me a little bit about this new location, where it is and where they can find you? Okay, the, this new location is uh, in Kahuku. And as you can see, I have my chicken up there like the other place uh, on the spit here. Uh, so come down and join us. So we took our plate lunches and headed over to the beach. It was still windy and super cold, but how can you go to Hawaii and not sit on the beach? So on day two, we ventured into the beautiful mountains of Kaneohe to visit the Biodo Inn Temple, which is a smaller scale replica of the over 950 year old Biodo Inn Temple in Japan. The beautiful grounds includes a large reflecting pond, meditation areas, and a three ton brass peace bell. Growing up with my parents being Buddhist, I thought it would be really special to take my mom here since I think that's part of the, like, one of the places that she wanted to visit. But just coming here and seeing the structure and the gardens, it's just so peaceful. I feel so calm and zen, but now I'm getting hungry. So we're gonna head on over to the Poi Factory for some Hawaiian plate lunch. I just ordered a whole Hawaiian plate lunch, Kahlua pig and beef luau, along with a side of chicken long rice, because it sounds so comforting on this cold day. Yes, it's cold in Hawaii. It's gingery, it's savory. Oh, it's perfect! 
That's my favorite one. Wow. So good, right? Yeah. And then I realized I didn't get any poi. I can't come to the poi factory without getting poi. Let's give it a try. There's not a ton of flavor, but the texture is thick. A little bit slimy, I don't mind it, but I can see how some people do not like poi, but I actually don't mind it. Dip with the rice and the Kahlua pig, I think it would be very complimentary. And then we also got a Sweet Lady Waihole, which is a warm, um, it's like kind of like warm poi with ice cream on top. I'm so excited to try it. So it almost tastes like mochi, like warm butter mochi with um, ice cream. I was wrong. It's actually taro or like poi consistency mixed with some coconut milk. I think he says some sugar and some other stuff. Oh, this is such a treat. Man, I'm still dreaming about that sweet lady Waiohole dessert. Oh, the warm buttery poi mochi with the super cold vanilla ice cream is just I can really eat that every day. I probably shouldn't, but I would. It's that good. We should just share every meal because we've been eating so much. Ugh. One plate lunch served me, Nate, and Aracy, and then my mom had the chicken long rice, and I'm still super full. Well, hello there. So we had plans to go to the North Shore today. However, as you can see, it's extremely stormy and windy. Wind's blowing at almost 60 miles per hour. So we had to shift our plans and instead today we're gonna hang out in Waikiki and now we're headed for brunch at Coco Head Cafe, which I have been dying to see since seeing Chef Leanne Wong on Food Network. But first, coffee. We found the most charming coffee shop, Olive and Oliver, tucked away in the Surf Jack Hotel. Not only did they have great coffee, but the spot was super photogenic too, and we ran into other bees of bees. In the back was a little clothing boutique, and we weren't expecting the weather to be so cold, so I had to get Nate a souvenir sweater. Now on to Coco Head by Chef Leanne Wong. We can't talk a lot because it's pretty loud in here, huh? We drove up near Diamond Head to enjoy food from this little brunch spot featuring local breakfast favorites with a Hawaiian twist. Mm. At first bite, you don't really taste the kimchi. It's very light and crispy. I don't taste I don't taste a lot of the bacon either, but then the kimchi spiciness hits you at the end. And then you taste it. Let's see if I get a bite of bacon and hit this one. There it is. Nate got a Coco Moco, which is her spin on the Loco Moco. And it was really interesting because there were fried tempura kimchi. I've never had that before. What a way to enjoy kimchi. What did I get? Oh yeah, I got a kanji. Um, it had Portuguese sausage, miso, um, croutons, and I asked for mine with a hard boiled egg and it was just so savory. Perfect for this really cold day today in Hawaii. And then finally, we also got a brick of hash browns. Honestly, is there anything better than a brick of crispy fried potatoes? Nope. And even though the food was amazing, I would say the service and the hostess left something to be desired. Just being honest, guys. Since it was so cold and windy to have any beach time, the family decided to take a walk into the heart of Waikiki, the international marketplace, which is so different than what I grew up going to. I actually really miss those candle makers making those like elaborate candles with Minnie and Mickey at the bottom, but the new one's pretty good too. 
There were so many restaurants to choose from, including Marukame Udon, but you know we love our Mexican food, so we skipped the line and headed over to Mi Almita Cantina for $2 tacos. It was a no-brainer. On the last two days, the weather finally cooperated, so we're grabbing some pokey at the famous Tanioka Seafood in Waipahu, just northwest of Honolulu near Pearl Harbor and the airport. There was a line out the door when we arrived, and while I was in line, I had my eyes on the rice balls, bentos, and lumpias on display. Once we got to the pokey case, I was pleasantly surprised to find about two dozen different types of pokey. I went with the alaya and limu pokey. Fresh, melt-in-your-mouth pokey that you can only find in Hawaii. Sorry, Josh. So you can't experience Hawaii without enjoying a beautiful sunset on the beach. That evening, we headed over to Waikiki Beach to nab a spot with the perfect view of Diamond Head and the fading sun. It stormed, we had beautiful weather, we ate a ton, and we visited so many new places that I personally have never been to before. Everything on the north and east side were my favorite. Our trip comes to an end, but not without a last breakfast at the hotel. If there was a favorite spot of yours that I missed, be sure to let me know in the comment section below for the next time I return to Hawaii. Aloha Hawaii, you've been so good to us. I cannot wait until the next time we return or move there. I'm still trying to convince Nate on that. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.